on the morning of September 11th, 2025. Aviation photographer Jared Hamilton stood outside Air Force Plant 42 in Palmdale with a small group of spotters who had been watching the facility for weeks. The ramp was quiet, and the hangar doors stayed closed. Then the rumble started. According to him, quote, We heard the engine noise and thought maybe they were doing taxi tests. But when the F-16 showed up, I knew. Across the field, a white, angular shape rolled into view. Hamilton started recording as the jet gathered speed, lifted off, and climbed while the chase plane tucked in close. The second B-21 Raider was airborne. Another ghost added to America's growing fleet of stealth bombers. In an era when China and Russia were racing to field their own next-generation bombers, the message was unmistakable. The competition had just entered a new phase. In December 2022, the U.S. Air Force in Northrop Grumman revealed America's first new stealth bomber in more than three decades. A sleek, long-range aircraft so dangerous it would force rival powers like China and Russia to rethink wars for decades to come. The ceremony was held at Air Force Plant 42 in Palmdale, California, attended by senior defense officials, Northrop Grumman executives, and relatives of the World War II Doolittle readers, the airmen who launched America's first strike on Japan after Pearl Harbor. According to Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin, quote, the audacity of the Doolittle readers has inspired generations of American aviators. It's fitting that the next chapter in American air power is named in their honor. Ladies and gentlemen, this is deterrence, the American way. Overhead, three bombers cross the sky in sequence. A B-52 Stratofortress, a B-1 Lancer with its afterburners flaring, and finally a B-2 Spirit gliding silently past. When Walter Grumman Chief Executive Kathy Wharton finished her remarks to the engineers and builders behind the project, the music swelled and the hangar doors slid apart, spilling light across the tarmac. Then the fabric covering the aircraft lifted at once, and the crowd erupted in applause. It's the world's first sixth-generation bomber. Officially designated the long-range strike bomber, the B-21 Raider was conceived in 2011 to replace America's aging fleet of Northrop B-2 Spirits. Like its predecessor, it employs a flying wing layout with no tail and a minimal fuselage, a design that reduces drag and significantly decreases radar visibility. With a 132-foot wingspan, the B-21 is somewhat smaller than the B-2, but can still carry up to 20,000 pounds of ordnance at speeds above Mach 0.8. Though its exact range remains classified, it's designed to reach any point on the globe from bases in the continental United States. With power coming from two Pratt & Whitney PW9000 non-afterburning turbofan engines, the Raider's airframe uses advanced stealth geometry that bends and diffuses radar waves along its curved surfaces. Apart from the bomb bay doors beneath the fuselage, there are almost no flat sections at all. The novel aircraft also features an AI-driven flight system that can handle large parts of the mission independently or share control with a human crew. Even after its reveal, the Air Force released almost nothing new. Following the event, the bomber vanished again behind the doors at Plant 42, the silence broken only by brief statements about continued ground testing and everything going according to plan. Yet by late 2023, it finally seemed like the Raider was about to leave the ground for the first time. On November 10th, 2023, the first test model of the B-21 Raider climbed smoothly into the sky for the first time from Northrop Grumman's Plant 42 in Palmdale. In the months after this groundbreaking maiden flight, which marked the Raider's shift from years of development to ground testing to actual air operations, the aircraft was transferred to Edwards Air Force Base under the 412th Test Wing, where the 420th Flight Test Squadron leads the B-21 program. Once there, engineers gathered data on flight performance and stealth coatings, with Northrop Grumman using the results to refine the design and begin building additional aircraft to expand the test fleet. By the middle of 2025, there was a growing expectation that a second B-21 would soon take flight, especially after July, when U.S. Air Force officials openly discussed their hope of having two B-21s flying soon. That prediction came true on September 11th, when the second Raider took to the air for the first time. The flight unfolded much like the first, with a chase plane escorting the bomber along a controlled route. A few lucky bystanders watching from outside the facility noted that the bomber again flew with its landing gear down, a hallmark of initial flight testing, 
but it climbed higher and stayed aloft longer. A small group of aircraft enthusiasts witnessed the momentous occasion. Professional photographer, spotter, and blogger Jared Hamilton stated, quote, it was incredible, the sound, the power, I'll never forget. Just a day later, both B-21 leaders were photographed together at Edwards Air Force Base for the first time. In recent years, Edwards had undergone major facility expansion, much of it to accommodate the Raiders' arrival and the classified infrastructure needed for testing stealth aircraft. Now, the Raider program is ready for its next phase. The first B-21 is nicknamed Cerberus, with a silhouette of the three-headed dog from Greek and Roman mythology painted on its nose landing gear door. Cerberus guards the gates of Hades, preventing the dead from escaping the underworld. The dark and ominous name is quite fitting for one of the most destructive flying machines ever created. Meanwhile, though the second aircraft still lacks most identifying markings like serial numbers, base codes, and unit crests, its nose landing gear bay door displays a motif featuring a Greek-style winged helmet with what appears to be crossed spears below. But these markings are just surface-level details. What truly matters is what the second jet enables for the program. According to Secretary of the Air Force Troy Mink, quote, With the arrival of the second B-21 Raider, our flight test campaign gained substantial momentum. We can now expedite critical evaluations, directly supporting the strategic deterrence and combat effectiveness envisioned for this aircraft. Unlike the first Cerberus B-21, the second aircraft doesn't have the test boom on the nose or the trailing cone on the tail, specialized equipment used to measure how the plane performs in flight. When asked about why the two aircraft looked different, a Northrop spokesman said on September 19th that tail number one's primary role for the test fleet is to, quote, validate flight sciences, handling qualities, and envelope expansion. With the second test aircraft, we move into a more advanced stage of testing, the weapons and mission systems that make the B-21 Raider a stealth bomber. The aircraft includes an updated software suite designed to allow faster, continuous updates to the B-21 fleet, ensuring they can evolve well ahead of emerging threats. Though the Air Force has not said how many B-21s it intends to dedicate to testing, the size of the first lot, five aircraft, aligns with typical test requirements, including non-flying ground test models. As Air Force Chief of Staff General David Alvin has stated, quote, by having more assets in the test environment, we bring this capability to our warfighters faster. And the future sure is bright for the B-21 Raider. The Air Force's goal is quite ambitious. Get the B-21 operational before the decade ends. Overall, the service plans to purchase at least 100 of these bombers, though mounting evidence suggests the final fleet could grow even larger. At a reported total price tag of $203 billion, this program represents one of the largest military investments in American history. The B-21 ranks among the top two aircraft acquisitions the military has ever pursued, matched only by the F-35 fighter program. It sits alongside other major defense initiatives, like the Navy's Columbia and Virginia-class submarines, and the next-generation nuclear missile system. The second B-21's first flight comes at a crucial moment for America's aging bomber fleet. Russia continues its war in Ukraine. China's increasingly improved designs on Taiwan are raising concerns across the Pacific. The U.S. military needs aircraft that can send a clear message to potential adversaries while backing it up with real capability. If war with China breaks out, the challenge is immediate. Beijing has built up sophisticated air defense systems that would threaten traditional bombers, and the Air Force needs aircraft that can fly deep into defended territory and survive. When these highly classified bombers begin arriving at bases like Ellsworth Air Force Base in South Dakota later this decade, they'll carry the B-61 nuclear bomb, the AGM-181 long-range standoff nuclear missile, and the next-generation Penetrator, a beefed-up successor to the AGM-158 massive ordnance penetrator, recently used to hit deeply buried Iranian nuclear facilities. The bomber will also likely handle a wide range of other Air Force strike weapons. For now, all America can do is wait. According to Lieutenant General Andrew Gabara, Deputy Chief of Staff for Strategic Deterrence and Nuclear Integration, quote, that's really been the secret sauce to the B-21 right now. There's no undue pressures. Let them do what they're doing, and they'll get us the world's best aircraft here. <laughs>